I got to be honest with you, this next guest is one of my favorite interviews just because he's plugged in, he knows a lot, and he doesn't shy away from telling you what he thinks and what he knows. I mean, what's not the love? He's Cash Patel, senior advisor to Donald Trump, former DOD chief of staff. By the way, you can get all your Cash Patel stuff that you would need at fightwithcash.com. Hey, Cash, thanks for joining us today. Hey, Larry, thanks so much for having me on the program. Appreciate it. I need to first start with these elections that we're still in the middle of because it's election week because we can't get it right. <laughs> you're, I know you're from Nevada. You campaigned a lot there for the great Adam Laxalt. I know you campaigned a lot in Arizona. Can you give us any insight as to what these elections are looking like right now? Yeah, let's start with the good, and I guess then we'll go to the bad. Look, I'm sitting in Las Vegas in my home right now, and Adam Laxalt, you know, we've been uh, hitting it hard for him. And as of this morning, with about 87% of the votes in, Adam Laxalt has about a 10,000 vote lead. Now, uh, we'll put aside the election shenanigans for a second and come back to that. But the way this breaks out with the remaining votes, 50,000 votes left it, it to tabulate in Clark County. And for those of you who don't know, that's Las Vegas, the most populous county, and Washoe County, the second most populous county, which is Reno, Lake Tahoe. Um, those votes outstanding have to break 65 to 35 in favor of Cortez Masto for her to win. And based on our math and the, and the areas where the ballots have been counted and come in, her best numbers are already in. So so we feel very good that Adam Laxalt will be the next senator from the state of Nevada. A quick, of course, quick follow up on that, Cash. Uh, on those ballots that are being counted right now, are those pre-election day mail-in or are those election day drop-offs? So Nevada, for the first time ever, has done election day drop-offs. But here's the problem. They, on the mail-in ballots, people can have their mail-in ballots counted until, get this, Larry, tomorrow. So they're going to be possibly counting mail-in ballots through tomorrow as long as they were postmarked by Election Day. And oh, by the way, there's no voter ID law required out here. And so these are just some of the problems we faced, along with the Clark County Registrar's Office in the Washoe County okay. Registrar literally told us on Election Day they were understaffed and unable to count the vote tabulations in a timely fashion. Uh, insanity. All right. And moving on to Arizona, then, if you don't mind. No, absolutely. Look, uh, you know, I was out there a lot for Kerry and Blake and Abe and company. And Kerry, I think, is in the best position, along with Abe Hamadah. Blake's got a mountain to climb. They're saying he might be able to do it. But the problem out there is just get this. We were talking about 50, 100,000 votes left in, in Nevada. They have 400,000 votes left to count, ballots left to count in the state of Arizona because their election teams out there were not prepared, apparently, for Election Day, and they wanted to make it Election Month, as you alluded to earlier. And Carrie Lake is well positioned. She's down maybe, I think, uh, 10 or 15,000 votes. But the, uh, the favorables there in terms of what's outstanding are strong in her, in her backing, and that's why I think she's going to win the race out there. Uh, Cash, I, listen, I want to ask you about a potential House investigation, since it looks like the Republicans are going to have a majority there. But before I do that, in Arizona, in Nevada, in some of these other states that have these outrageous voting procedures right now, can a new governor, Carrie Lake, or a new attorney general, I know that you, we, we had Abe Hamada on uh, last week, uh, he's a really impressive guy. What can they do to investigate this and fix this at the state level? That's absolutely the home run there. They are the ones that fix it. The AG, the state AG, and the governor. Look, let's just put this in perspective. Florida and uh, Iowa have twice to three times as many people voting than Arizona and Nevada. How is it that they can count their ballots in a timely fashion for triple the amount and do so and return it on election night? It's because they have election laws in place that don't permit this goofy, wacky, unregistered voting process that goes on for days after the election. And they staff up and they make sure their computers work. And here's the other yeah. thing. I don't know if you heard about this, but in Maricopa County, the machines literally ran out of ink. Oh, yeah. On of election course. Day. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I know. And again, I, before anybody like jumps all over it. I'm not suggesting anything wrong or illegal is going on. What I'm saying is that when you have a process like this, it makes you feel uneasy. It's, it looks like it's being gerrymandered. It looks like it's not on the up and up. And I want everybody to walk away at the end of Election Day feeling, hey, even if my guy lost, at least it was a legitimate process. And I, this doesn't feel legit. No, you're absolutely right. And, you know, to make it legitimate, and it's, and it's not a political thing. You're so right. And people aren't saying that. It's not 
a apol- it's not political to ask for a staffing with competency your voting registrar's offices yeah. it's not political to say we want ink in the machines what's what's political is to say we have excuses for these delays but these rules can be changed and as you alluded to the governor and the state ag can change these rules overnight it's what Kerry Lake and Abe Hamid have promised to do and Sisolak's going to do the same thing out here he has a commanding lead in the state of Nevada to take down um uh, excuse me, not Sisolak, but uh, Lombardo to take down Sisolak. Let's move to the House, Cash Patel. I know you know your way around that. You were the chief of staff for um, for Devin Nunes on the Intelligence Committee. Um, you know your way around House investigations. If you had a top three uh, to go mm-hmm. after for the, the new formed Republican majority House this January, what are you targeting here in terms of House investigations? Yeah, I have got a top three. That's easy. One, DOJ, FBI corruption and the two tier system of justice they've created by politically targeting American citizens rather than enforcing the law and following factual investigations. So they have to come first Two, Fauci. Everything from the China virus origins to the jab to the continuous lies, millions and millions of people around the world hung on to his words and were misinformed deliberately. I believe he needs to be investigated in three, the border, the border, the border, the border, illegal aliens, crime, drugs, Chinese fentanyl, those three have to be the main focus investigations uh, of this house that's incoming. Quick follow up on number three. Would you actually do a standalone investigation into the border policies and, and how our laws are being ignored at the border right now? Or would you just begin an impeachment com- uh, hearing on uh, Secretary Mayorkas and let all that evidence come out during the impeachment? You know, maybe I'm a former prosecutor, former public defender, so I'm, 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 I'm a guy that wants to collect the evidence first. So I would do a committee investigation first and build the case through their own documentation like we did during Russiagate and then move to impeachment. So you can tell the American people we've done our homework. Here is the result of our homework. And the result is an impeachment based on X, Y and Z that they can show America and the world. All right. And, and one other question, because I want an investigation into uh, who advised who on the uh, Afghanistan pull out uh, because we we still haven't gotten to the bottom of that disaster. And and there are three, uh, 13 Mm -hmm. dead U.S. military members on this Veterans Day. I think at the very least their memories and their their honor deserve some real transparency. Uh, You know your way around this stuff. You know how quickly people claim, you know, oh, that's classified. We got to do it behind closed doors. Do we have any hope of actually getting a transparent, full investigation into what went wrong there? I think we do. And look, as a former chief of staff at DOD who ran President Trump's Afghan withdrawal and in and, and happy Veterans Day to those who are serving and to those who have served on this day of all days, we have to keep that in paramount importance. Under Trump, we lost zero uh, American service soldiers during our withdrawal. And there was a politicization of that withdrawal when the Biden administration took over. And I think it lays directly at the Joint Chiefs of Staff Office and their Secretary of Defense um, in uh, in the incoming administration. But what Republicans can do is what we did during Russiagate on this matter, too. You take their money. You say, we are not going to give you another dollar until you produce your own documentation that shows the critical failures that led to the deaths of 13 American service members and the politicization of it by guys like Chairman Milley going in and after drone striking seven innocent Afghan children and saying that was somehow a victory to cover up the fraud. And it can be done. All right. Finally, Cash Patel, uh, I saw a bunch of spin. It was announced last week that you were granted immunity to testify before a grand jury over the Mar-a-Lago raid. Uh, And I know there's not a lot you can say about that. However, I saw some people saying, oh, that's it. Cash Patel has flipped on Trump to in exchange for immunity. I remember you. I was interviewing her when this happened. You were begging to testify about this. Yeah, look, whether it was January 6th, whether it was Russiagate or any other matters that I'm involved with, I have no problem telling the people the truth. My problem is based solely in the following. When you politicize law enforcement, when you politicize national security so you can obtain obtain a false narrative and perpetuate a disinformation campaign, that's what I have a problem with. I will always fight that. I will always put out the truth where I can. And I, unlike some of the people that are running these processes, will continue to follow the law. And uh, quickly, I mean, you have said you've gone on the record that you saw that President Trump uh, declassified the documents that were at Mar-a-Lago. Did you, you saw him do that or, or was there an actual procedure in place? You know, I've, I've said publicly and put out public statements. I'll have to rely on those for the time being while this other nonsense uh, sorts itself out. But I'm sure when I can speak publicly, I'm coming back on your show and going nuts. All right. And I'll wear those great Cash Patel socks I got from... <laughs> Fightwithcash.com. Cash, always good to talk to you. Thank you. 
Thank you, my friend. Have a great day. Oh, man, if only we I can't wait for those investigations. See, that's only four we got to and uh, and we could have even more. That's what this election brought us. In fact, more on that a little later in the program. It's O'Connor tonight.